So in a previous video, we talked about diodes, and we introduced the concept of what the, what the diode is and how it behaves in the ideal case. Now in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to introduce the constant voltage model. If you recall from that previous video, we mentioned that there were three main types of diode models, and the ideal one we introduced in the previous video. This video is going to introduce the constant voltage model, and in a future video, we will introduce the exponential model. Now, if you haven't already, take a look at the video for the ideal diode so you can understand how diodes work in the ideal case. Um, we will briefly go over, you know, the little details here and there, um, or the, the subtle differences, I guess. Um, but if we're an in-depth discussion on how the diode works, we can, I'll link that video down below so you can take a look. So you can look at the description box and we'll, we'll talk about everything in that video. Um, so what do we say here? We start off and this is the same as ideal um, but we basically say that VD equals 0 0.7 so let's take a look then at the um, the current voltage characteristic that we drew in the previous video if you recall we had a plot here and this was I and this was V and in the previous video we had this value of 0 was something of significance and we know we basically we had was it was 0 the current was zero up until this point, and then it went up straight to infinity, you would assume it's greater than zero, that's all we care about. But what we're gonna see in this model is that instead of zero point, or sorry, zero, we're going to have 0 0.7 is now our magic number, 0 0.7 volts. And so what we have at 0 0.7 volts is that this goes up, and then what we have before that is you have it's entirely zero. So this is why we call it the constant voltage model, because when it's on, it has a constant voltage of 0 0.7, and when it's off, it has a voltage, obviously, drop of 0, because it's, no, well, not a voltage drop of 0, it's just the uh, the current through it is 0. So what we do is we have two regions again, so we call this the reverse bias region. So under this region, the diode is said to be reverse biased. And in this case, we have the forward biased region. So that's everything over here, and then this is everything over here, which is reversed. Uh, this is also referred to as on sometimes, and this is referred to as off. It's just an easier way of, you know, referring to what's actually going on. So, what we'll do here is we'll talk about the reverse bias, what the characteristics are there, and then we'll talk about the forward bias. So we have two uh, modes of operation. You'll notice this is, again, it's basically the exact same setup, it's just it's shifted over by 0 0.7. So when it's reverse biased, you have, in general, your diode looks like this, but when it's actually reverse biased, it'll be an open circuit, as it was before. Um, the difference here, when it's forward biased, is now this diode will become something a little different. Instead, it'll be, we model that as a voltage source, so it's a voltage drop, right? If it's on, it's a 0 0.7, so this is gonna be 0 0.7. So let's just go ahead and label everything here. So we have a VD here, and of course we have a VD here, and then we say we have a current here, that's ID. And then we have a current here, obviously, same current. Well, not necessarily the same current, but modeling the same current. And you'll notice here, under this situation, we have ID is going to equal zero, and VD is going to be less than 0 0.7 volts. And in this case, you have that ID is greater than zero, according to this IV characteristic here, and you have that VD is going to equal 0 0.7. And so what I can do here then is I can say that this drop here is 0 0.7 volts. And so this is the this is the only difference between the ideal and the constant voltage um, diodes, is that in one case we basically, our, our boundary is 0, and in the other case it's 0 0.7. The reason we use 0 0.7 is it's a more realistic approximation. Um, in general, the, the average diode um, will turn on at about 0 0.7 volts, and we'll see that again uh, when we look at the exponential model, which is a little more involved. So this is a simplification of that. But in, for all intents and purposes of analyzing most diode circuits, this 0 0.7 volt drop is, 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 is a, it's, a, it's a nice number. Um, it, it's fairly conservative, it's reasonable. Uh, it, it's usually in that area, 0 0.67, 0 0.65, it usually starts to turn on 0 0.7, the diode is completely on. 
Um, and what I mean by completely on and, and starts to turn on, we'll see in the exponential video, because that one is a more detailed model. Um, but d dealing with this model here is a very, um, it's a fair uh, assumption and approximation to make. So what we're going to do now is we're going to solve the exact same example that we had in the previous case, um, or in the previous video when we had the ideal uh, diode. And we're just going to see how the, di the, the circuit or how the process sort of changes. And if you're interested in looking at more uh, in-depth examples on how to solve or how to use this type of model, uh, I will link those as well uh, in, in at the bottom or in the description box of this video. And so you can take a look at those um, because these problems can become fairly involved the more diodes you have, obviously, as we discussed in the ideal uh, diode case where we introduce the diode. The number of diodes governs the number of possible states that you can have, and so um, it's the the complexity of the problem increases as the number of diodes increases. So here's what we have, and as we said before, the diode can be so. There's two possible states: the diode can either be on or it's off. I'm going to start by assuming that the diode is off. So if I say diode is off, then what I'm going to do is redraw the circuit according to that assumption, and I'm going to solve. Well, I should first also label these currents here that I'm interested in. I'm interested in this current here. So this current we call I1, and this current here we call I2. And so I'm interested in those two currents. And if the diode is off, you recall it's just an open circuit, according to these models that we have up here. Um, and so, sorry, that's... Yep. And so this is plus 6 volts, and this is minus 6 volts. This voltage here is obviously VD, as it has been, um, according to the diode. And now what we need to check is that if this diode is off, the assumption is that VD has to be less than 0 0.7. So we're going to check VD less than 0 0.7 volts. If VD is less than 0 0.7 volts, this assumption is true, and we can solve I1 and I2 accordingly. If it's not less than 0 0.7, then we have a problem and we have to go to the other state. So what I'm going to do here is, again, we did voltage division in the last video, and if you haven't, if you don't understand how to do voltage division, there is a link. I will link the video for the voltage division down below as well, so you can take a look at how we do that. Um, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide the positive source. So this is plus 6, and this gets divided across the 2K. So the, the voltage I'm interested in VD is, is this one I should, which is the same voltage here. So the voltage at that node, I use a lowercase, so let's stick with the lowercase, is the one I'm interested in. It'll be VD times 2 over 1 plus 2, and then plus, because this is superposition, then the, the contribution of the negative 6 source will be seen across the 1K, and that'll be 1 over 1 plus 2. And if I solve this, we did this previously already, and if you don't, if you haven't done it previously, you can solve it. It's very simple. VD is equal to 2. But what we were supposed to check was that VD had to be less than 0 0.7. So we say VD is greater than 0 0.7 volts. That means this is invalid. Invalid. So this is an invalid assumption to assume that this diode is. Uh, off is invalid. So now what I'm going to do then is I'm going to assume that my diode is on. If it's not off, it must be on. And if my diode is on, then I must redraw the circuit. And the reason I redraw the circuit every time, again, and I will mention this every time I redraw a circuit, is because it helps you understand what's going on. It makes everything very clear in your head how the circuit's changing, because in more advanced circuits you might have things that change as different conditions are applied to the circuit. And so it's always a good idea to have a new picture or a most, most recent, I guess, version of the circuit that you're working with. And so this is the circuit, and it takes about 10 seconds, 15 seconds extra to draw it, but it saves you a whole lot in the long run. So what we have to do now is 
we have to check ID, and ID, of course, is the current here that runs through this diode, so the, or this voltage source now, which is actually the diode. We're just modeling it as a voltage source. And so what this tells me is that the voltage here at this point is 0 0.7 volts higher than ground potential, ground potential obviously being zero. So if this is 0 0.7 volts higher, then I say this is 0 0.7 volts there, of course. And so then I can solve for I1, and I can say that I1 is equal to 6 minus 0 0.7 divided by 1. This is going to be equal to 5.3 milliamps. And if I do the same thing for I2, I start here 0 0.7 minus minus 6, so 0 0.7 minus minus 6 divided by 2. And this is 6.7 divided by 2 is 3.35 milliamps. And then I can write a KCL here, or I can use logic, or well, the logic is KCL essentially, Kirchhoff's current law for those of you that aren't familiar with KCL abbreviation. Basically what it says is that I1 will be equal to the sum of I2 and ID, therefore ID must be equal to the difference of I1 and I2. And so what I have is that ID is going to equal to I1 minus I2, and I1 and I2 I've already solved for, and if I do that difference, I get this is equal to 1.95 milliamps. And now the condition we had to check, which we didn't actually write here like we did in this case, what we had to check was that ID is greater than zero. So I can, I can add that here then. We should say check ID greater than zero. If ID is greater than zero, that verifies that this is on. ID is indeed greater than zero, and therefore, the diode is on and we have solved the values of the circuit uh, or like the, the, the values that we were interested in which is I1 and I2 because those are the only unknowns in this case really. So we can say that diode is on and then I1 equals 5.3 milliamps and I2 equals 3.35 milliamps. And so let's just recap what we did here. We went, first of all, we introduced this new model here. And the only difference between the model is that this zero shifts over to 0 0.7. And this model of the diode is the most commonly used one. Um, it's the easiest one to use. So the exponential model that we're going to look at in, in the later video is useful, but it has its sort of niche applications as to where it's used in analysis. It's always true, but it's just in terms of analysis, you might not always need to use that model. And the ideal model is a very rough approximation because you can see here that we're off by about 0 0.7. And if you compare these values with the previous ones from the, from the ideal case, you'll see that these values are all slightly off. And so we went through that, introduced these two things. Again, the conditions that we check are the exact same. If it's off, we're checking that the voltage is less than 0 0.7. If it's on, we're checking that the current is greater than zero. So these are the two things that we need to be able to make sure that we actually understand what that we're checking. Um, oftentimes people will confuse. I've seen that they'll think that if I turn it on and this is 0 0.7, I just have to check if it's 0 0.7. That's a sort of redundancy because in the assumption that it's on, you've already forced it to be 0 0.7. So you have to force one condition and then check the other. So in this case, you'll notice we force ID equals zero. So we force this thing to be an open circuit and then we check the other condition, which is less than 0 0.7. And in this case, what we do is we force it to be 0 0.7, and by forcing it, we've placed a, a voltage source here. And so when I place this voltage source here, I've, I've forced this drop to be 0 0.7. Now I need to check the other condition, which is ID has to be greater than uh, 0, strictly greater than 0, because equals to 0 would be this. So I guess then that uh, this would be well you can't even have neg you can't have less than so it's a negative because the current can't go backwards in, in the diode as we introduced previously and so then we went through and solved this question and these are basic circuit analysis techniques that you should have learned in, in, in an introductory circuit uh, course and if you haven't then there are links in the description box below that where i've included for voltage division and and this is really ohm's law so i don't i mean at this point this should be very straightforward and so i hope you found this video helpful if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button so you have notifications whenever we do upload new videos for you. And other than that, I want to thank you guys for watching, and I hope you have a great day. We'll see you in the next one.